Hi. Now, in this video, what I want to do is follow up on what we were looking at in the previous video, which was about the roots of a quartic equation. I showed you that a quartic equation can be expressed in terms of its roots as x to the power 4 minus the sum of the roots times x cubed plus the sum of the product pairs of roots times x squared minus the sum of the product triples of roots times x plus the product of roots and that equals zero. Now what I want to do here is follow it up with an example where we've got this question here. We've got 2x to the power 4 minus 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0 and we're told it has roots alpha, beta, gamma and delta. And we've got to find the equation, the quartic equation that will be, with roots 1 over alpha, 1 over beta, 1 over gamma, 1 over delta. In other words, the reciprocal of these roots here. Okay? So you might actually be wanting to do this question in advance of me doing it. If so, just give you a few moments to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward to check your answer, or I'm going to take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So you might want to fast forward, as I said earlier, just to check your solution. Otherwise, I'm going to be taking you slowly through this. Now, there's going to be quite a lot going on, so I hope you bear with me with this. It's going to look a little bit crammed, but I just felt that I wanted to show you everything on the one screen. So the first thing we need to remember then is that if we're looking at building up this equation, this new equation with the roots 1 over alpha, 1 over beta, 1 over gamma, and 1 over delta, then that quartic equation is going to take on this particular form here. That's working with what we have up here. Let me just explain. We've got x to the power 4 minus, remember, the sum of the roots times x cubed. Well, we use this notation here, minus the sum of 1 over alpha. And that means that we're looking at working out the sum of the new roots, okay? These being the new roots. So sigma 1 over alpha represents the sum of those new roots. And similarly, we've got plus the sum of the product pairs of roots times x squared. And that's given by this symbol here, sigma 1 over alpha beta times the x squared there. And so when it comes to sigma 1 over alpha beta, it represents the sum of the product pairs of roots. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. Next, we come on to minus the sum of the product triples of those roots times x. And that's given by this notation here. Okay, so that means basically sigma 1 over alpha, beta, gamma is the sum of these reciprocals where we've got the product triples of these roots. Okay, so I hope you can see that. And lastly, we've got this term at the end, which is the product of all the roots. If we were to multiply these roots together, then we're going to get this result here. OK, which gives us this term, which I've written at the end here. OK, so that's our equation that we've got to head towards. Now I'm going to need to get values for each of these coefficients of x cubed, x squared and x and this constant at the end. So in other words, I need to work out values for each of these parts here. Now, in order to do that, in the previous video, we discussed the relationship between the roots then, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta in this case, and any quartic equation of the form ax to the power 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e equaling 0. So, 
when you look at this quartic equation, we can see that the values for A would be 2, B would be minus 3, C would be 2, D would be minus 5, and E would be 6. And I showed you that we could take the sum of the roots, that would be given by sigma alpha, meaning alpha plus beta plus gamma plus delta, okay? I showed you that it was equal to minus B over A. And if we make those substitutions in here, minus B will be minus minus 3, and it will be divided by A, which is 2. That's going to lead to 3 over 2, okay? So that's sigma alpha. So what was the other thing we learned? We learned that the sum of the product pairs of the roots, okay, turned out to be C over A. Okay, so that's alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus alpha delta and so on comes to C over A. And if we substitute those values in, C was 2, A was 2, we've got 2 over 2, which is 1. We also looked at the sum of the product triples of roots given by this shorthand here. Okay, and that turns out to be equal to minus D over A. And when you substitute your values in for D at negative 5 and A at 2, you end up with 5 over 2. And lastly, the product of the roots, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, turned out to be equal to E over A. And E is 6 and A is 2. So you can see that you end up with 3. OK. So what I need to do now is just work at simplifying these results so that I can pick up on using these values here. So if we take this first one, the sum of 1 over alpha, referring to this result here, what I would want to do is put them all over the lowest common multiple. Okay, And if I do that, that lowest common multiple is going to be alpha, beta, gamma, delta, that will be in the denominator, and I can then work out what my numerator would be, and it will be this result up the top here. And do you notice, this is the sum of the products of triple roots, okay? That's this value here. And we saw that that was 5 over 2, which I've got in the numerator here. And in the denominator, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, we've got here as being 3. OK, so 5 over 2 divided by 3, that's going to be 5 sixths. So I've already got this value in here. OK, so now we're going to look at this value here, sigma 1 over alpha beta, which is shorthand for the sum of the products of pairs of roots. OK, these are our new roots. So they're here, the sum of those products pairs of roots. And doing that, again, I'm going to put this over the lowest common multiple. And that too is going to be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And then work out the corresponding numerator in my fraction. And it turns out to be the sum of the product pairs of roots, which is given by this notation here. And we've seen that that has a value of 1. And in the denominator, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, we've seen has a value of 3. So we know that this will be 1 over 3, a third. OK, so that's looking good. We've now got this coefficient for x squared. So we're now going to work out what sigma, the sum of 1 over alpha, beta, gamma is. And we've seen that it's this result here. And again, let's put this all over one lowest common multiple, and that will be alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And again, if we work out the numerator, look what we get. We get the sum of the roots, given by this shorthand notation, which is 3 over 2. So you've got 3 over 2 over that denominator again of 3. OK, so put that over 3. And that reduces down to a half. And as for this term on the end, 
the product of all our roots here, our new roots. Well then clearly it reduces down to this fraction and we can see that the denominator is 3 from here. Okay, so that's just going to mean that this is going to turn out to be 1 third. So I can now substitute all my values in to this equation and if I do that what I get is this result. Okay, here we are. Now I could leave it like that but if I wanted integer coefficients then I would just multiply through by 6 being the lowest common multiple of 6, 3, 2 and 3. So multiplying through by 6 gives me this final result that this is our new quartic equation. 6x to the power 4 minus 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So hope you can see your way through that and if you did have a go and got that right that's excellent. Okay well done and uh, that brings us to the end of this particular example. So if you like this please give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel where you'll get updates of any new videos that I put up. Okay so uh, thanks for watching. See you again hopefully in another video. Bye for now.